Xenosystems Fragments. Against Universalism. Nickland. Narrated by Skeptical Waves. There's a philosophical objection to any refusal of universalism that will be familiar from other uses, the denunciation of relativism, most typically. It requires only one step, isn't the denial of the universal itself a universalist claim? It's a piece of malignant dialectics because it demands that we agree. We don't, and won't ever, agree. Agreement is the worst thing that could happen. Merely assent to its necessity, and global communism, or some close analog, is the implicit conclusion. If there is a universal truth, it belongs only to Nyan, and Nyan is a dark, occulted, god. Traditional theists will be at least strongly inclined to disagree, and that is excellent. We disagree already, and we have scarcely begun. There is no good life for man, in general, or if there is we know nothing of it, or not enough. Even those persuaded that they do, on the contrary, know what such a life should be, promote its universality only at the expense of being denied the opportunity to pursue it. If we need to agree on the broad contours of such a model for human existence, then reaching agreement will precede it, and reaching agreement is politics. Some much wider world acquires a veto over the way of life you select, or accept, or inherit, the details need not detain us. We have seen how that works. Global communism is the inevitable destination. The alternative to agreement is schism. Secession, geopolitical disintegration, fragmentation, splitting, disagreement escapes dialectics and separates in space. Anti-universalism, concretely, is not a philosophical position but an effectively defensible assertion of diversity. From the perspective of the universal, which belongs only to Neon, and never to man, it is an experiment. The degree to which it believes in itself is of no concern that matters to anything beyond itself. It is not answerable to anything but Nyan. What anyone, anywhere, thinks about it counts for nothing. If it fails, it dies, which should mean nothing to you. If you are compelled to care about someone else's experiment, then a schism is missing. Of course, you are free to tell it that you think it 464 will fail, if it is listening, but there is absolutely no need to reach agreement on the question. This is what, in the end, non-communism means. Non-universalism is hygiene. It is practical avoidance of other people's stupid shit. There is no higher principle in political philosophy. Every attempt to install an alternative, and impose a universal, reverts to dialectics, communization, global evangelism, and totalitarian politics. This is being said here now, because NRX is horribly bad at it and degenerates into a clash of universalisms, as into an instinctive equilibrium. There are even those who confidently propose an NRX solution for the world. Nothing could be more absurd. The world, as a whole, is an entropy bin. The most profoundly degraded communism is its only possible universal consensus. Everyone knows this, when they permit themselves to think. All order is local, which is to say the negation of the universal. That is merely to restate the second law of thermodynamics, which we generally profess to accept. The only thing that could ever be universally and equally distributed is noise. Kill the universalism in your soul and you are immediately, objectively, a neo-reactionary protect it, and you are an obstacle to the escape of differences. That is communism, whether you recognize it, or not.